Hi, it's Jim. Hey, hello. How are you? I'm good. Looks like we're the only ones here today. Yes, I thought Erica had scheduled somebody on the agenda. Let me just quickly check. I see in the meeting notes that uh, there was one item and then uh, the person wrote that he's unable to attend, so. Ah, uh, okay. And I don't have anything. <laughs> I just... Uh, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. So I think we can just reschedule then and wait uh, on the. I didn't have anything to report either. Just for quick introductions, I don't know if you've met before in this meeting or in other forums. I'm Jim Baguadia from Nirmata. Cool. I'm uh, Itai Shakuri. I work for Aqua Security in the open source team. I actually have been uh, listening uh, to the um policy working group uh, meetings for a while now um okay and i um, like ask some of my teammates uh, liz and daniel to join and i know that they have also presented here before yes so, yes so i'm following your work i like it <laughs> and i just uh, wanted to um keep an eye on the progress got it okay um, yeah, so I think, you know, Liz and Daniel had presented a while back, um, I think on, was it Star, Star Starboard. If I, Starboard? Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Um, and we had talked about, you know, potentially leveraging the policy report as part of that. We're also very interested in, you know, there is uh, some activity on taking, you know, output from like different scanners like KubeBench, et cetera. Uh, mm -hmm. perhaps even trivi and you know kind of converting it to policy reports so it would be interesting to discuss that in more detail and see what would be the best approach whether it's through um, starboard or whether it's through some other adapter or other approach that we write yeah um, so i think that um, right now the policy this working group is working on just the spec for how the report can look like, right? It's not uh, any tooling related um, to the scanning itself, right? Am I getting it right? Yes, that's exactly right. It's just the spec for the output. And the report is meant to be uh, almost in some uh, a summary of all, you know, and there could be, of course, multiple instances of reports at different scopes, but the idea is to have a summary for the cluster admin or the operators to yeah. um, see outputs from different tools. Yeah, so I think that maybe um, in the context of Starboard, um, maybe uh, Starboard can offer, right now, uh, Starboard outputs the report in um, its own format that is more tailored to the, to the actual tool that uh, that is being uh, that, is, that is doing the scan. So, for example, for um, a trivia report, we look different from a Polaris report. But, okay. um, but um, I mean, I think that the policy uh, spec that you're working on is is, uh, is very interesting. So maybe we can add another option. Um, and uh, by the way, I'm not speaking on behalf of uh, Aqua or anything. I'm just uh, brainstorming here out loud. Uh, we can maybe add another option yeah. that. Uh, uh, pe people can choose to get the report as a, as a, uh, is there a name for the spec? I don't know. It's a policy. It's just policy report. <laughs> policy report, yeah. Right. Uh, as, as this thing. And uh, this is one option. The other one is uh, going through an adapter. I don't know. Um, yeah. I think, I think we can, it, it's a good idea. We can consider it. This is why I'm uh, trying to join these calls to, to see. Okay. When is a good point to start uh, looking at that seriously? Okay, sounds good. I see Jaya is on too. Hi, Jaya, how are you? I think Jaya is on mute. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, hi, Jim. Oh, there you are. I don't know, maybe picturing your name. Is it Ite? It's uh, Itai, yeah. Itai, Itai. 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 Nice Itai. To meet you. 
Yeah, Itai is from Aqua Security. He works with Liz and Daniel, who had presented before. So we were just chatting a little bit about, oh. you know, the integration with tools like KubeBench, Trivi, yeah. and maybe Starboard. Yeah, in fact, that uh, that would be a good question, right? Which is, um, is this the first time you're looking at the policy report proposal, and is this something that will get integrated with KubeBench? Um, it's not the first time, but uh, I am looking for the right um, opportunity to uh, to look at it. I don't know, uh, like, what's the plan to uh, make this proposal something more um, official, or is there anything, any milestone that we should be looking forward to? Yeah, so there is, you know, I think we have to try it out and it kind of, it's interesting, right? Because I don't think there's any formal process to make it official. The idea would be if we show adoption and if we show how this is used in different tools, then we can go back to maybe SIG Security and SIG Auth, present this to them and see if we can get this promoted to its own repo out of this prototypes repo, right? So that would be kind of, uh, I guess it's not really any official graduation. Right? So this is not gonna be, there's no formal way to make this part of Kubernetes per se, right? Because it's a custom resource and we wanted it to be a custom resource. So, yes. but what we can do is if, if this goes under in the SIGs and if there's adoption of it, we can propose it either as a CNCF sandbox project, which again, I don't know if it makes sense to do that or just, move it at least into its own repository with its own namespace uh, where we maintain it, right? To say this is a policy report everybody can use. Yeah. Um, so I think that would be it, right? There's no other, there's no other sort of uh, milestone or anything we're looking for. And even of course, if from the, in the current repo, it's completely usable. So it, we have started using this for Kiverno, which is uh, a policy engine project that I'm involved with uh, from Nirmata. We also are using this for, you know, in the multi-tenancy working group uh, for multi-tenancy reporting. So okay. there's, a, there's a tool called uh, multi-tenancy benchmarks, which mm -hmm. can scan a namespace and, you know, kind of recommend best practices for multi-tenancy. So we're using the same report format for that. Uh, so those are two examples. And I know JS team is also, you know, kind of looking at integrating into a few things that Red Hat uh, in Rackham uh, and, and that product, right, Jay? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, uh, good to know. Uh, I think we're definitely it's definitely interesting uh, and, and we are going to look at it, uh, how we are going to integrate with it. I can't say if it's like, right now or maybe right. in a few, uh, maybe next month or something, but uh, definitely something that uh, on our uh, radar. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think we, we should kind of, you know, the idea, the reason why we went down this path is we are looking for what's the, you know, almost like the, the simplest thing we could standardize across policy tools, right? And I think there, there are more, there are other ideas we had discussed, but we decided mm -hmm. to focus on this as the first, you know, kind of building block. Um, and then we can go back and, so by the way, I, I don't know if all of you have been following, like uh, OPA is graduating or yeah. they've they submitted a proposal for graduation. Yeah. So there's some good discussions also over there on that thread uh, for, you know, the pros and cons and the trade-offs of using something like OPA and Rego versus other policy tools. And I think, um, you know, I'll, I'll follow up with those few folks who commented and invite them to come to our group and discuss, you know, other ideas for standardization, right? Because I think it's clear there'll be several tools uh, doing different functions. So I think uh, we probably, one of the things we can do is even, and I know Starboard has some classification of tools already, right? So. Uh, perhaps we can use that framework or we can extend that or refine that as needed to say, hey, here are the types of different tools, whether it's image scanning um, to admission controls and configuration scanning um, or runtime, you know, uh, runtime kind of security type of tools. Yeah. Uh, so those are the 
categories. And, and then these are some examples of tools which fall into each. And of course, CI, CD, like so out of cluster tools, right? So tools which can scan and manage YAMLs and report outside of a cluster itself. Yeah, um, makes sense. So, so maybe, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, so um, one thing is I wanted to just say here that um, Rackham um, is integrated with the Gatekeeper OPA, right? So we are working on that. And um, the other thing is, um, I posted a link in the chat for OSCAL. One of the things I'm also trying to understand is how, what will be the integration between what OSCAL, the work NIST is doing with, um, with the Pulse report proposal? I don't know that you guys are, uh, have looked into OSCAL. I have not, yeah. I'm not familiar with this, yeah. Hi, this is Robert. I was able to join uh, late, apologies. Um, hey, Robert. Yeah, I, so I have looked at OSCAL and, and um, I'm helping a couple of projects look at it. Um, so to, I think to answer your question is, um, you know, certainly the, I mean, OSCAL is a, a definition of controls. So if you look at policy, policy is either a statement of you know, controls or itself a control, as I see it, and the kind of the conceptual model. Um, so I think, and, and I'm not an OSCAL expert, so if I, if I misstate the, the model, please feel free to jump in and correct, but I think that there are um, definitions within the OSCAL model for policy um, that would be a component of uh, you know, some system, but it would, you know, it doesn't, a component doesn't have to be software, it doesn't have to be hardware, it could be a policy artifact. Um, and so I guess you, the, I, the goal would be to map policy as we think of it in this work group as, you know, executable policy, machine executable policy. Policy would be itself an asset in OSCAL, a component in OSCAL, and the findings in, in the CR API, for example, would map to some controlled definition, both the originating policy and then also the, the contextual goal of that control, if that makes sense. So a control mapping to policy, a policy mapping to control. So that's how I would envision the interaction between policy and the, the CR output versus OSCAL. Yeah, I think, I think that makes sense, Robert. And what I was thinking was if, um, if the policy report schema includes at least some of the elements of OSCAL, then the um, management tool that is consuming the various policy reports um, can um, provide a view from a particular standard perspective, right? Whether it is NIST 853 or some of the other standards. Um, is where I see the linkage between the two. Yeah, essentially as a, there's two use cases. I mean, I'm sure there's many others, but kind of the two primary use cases, you know, one is kind of the DevOps perspective. Someone hands me down, you know, uh, this link to, you know, FedRAMP or NIST 853 and says, you know, implement this. And I have to be able to demonstrate that my policies cover certain controls. So by, kind of top down mapping my policy implementation all the way down to my policy out report output to a particular control, I can demonstrate, yes, I've accomplished that. I've mapped these policies and these outputs to a, a compliance statement tagged with these controls in OSCAL. Um, from the other direction, if you're an auditor, you wanna, you know, you're gonna collect evidence. So you're gonna say, can I query the system for NIST 853 AC-3, uh, query all the policy report outputs that are relevant to that control so that I can gather that into my evidence locker. So yep. kind of the, the top down and bottom up use case. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think a bi-directional mapping is, is, is highly necessary. Um, 
in terms of in terms of I guess the, the other the user, I don't know, maybe it overlaps these use cases. The first one maybe. Um, if if I'm an actual FedRAMP authorizing official and I get someone drops an OSCAL implemented FedRAMP package on my desk and it's supposed to be machine verifiable that I meet FedRAMP, then there needs to be a, a detail, a tracing down to, you know, an actual policy artifact in machine readable code that says, yep, it's, it's implementing this control by via this executable means and the data it's generating is going to map to this control, you know, policy report output. So yeah. how that would work and, and I'm not, uh, <laughs> I don't know how the mechanics of that would actually work and how the validation uh, tooling that the FedRAMP folks actually have ready, but I think that's the grand vision. Yeah. Yeah. I think I wonder whether Jim, we should include in the, in the policy report, the at least a position statement on how we would integrate, right? Yeah, I think that would make sense. Um, is there, you know, I know Robert, you seem to know this, uh, uh, but is there somebody we also perhaps want to invite from, you know, who might be working on OSCAL to do a deeper dive and sort of uh, give a presentation in one of our working group meetings with that? Yeah, I can, I can certainly reach out. I, I don't have a special relationship with any of the folks and okay. just, uh, we're all monitoring the same Git repos and commenting on PRs and whatnot. So <laughs> I can, right. you know, I can I put the invite out there, but. In honest, let, let me reach out to them and see whether they would be interested in doing that. Um, okay. That'd be great. Yeah, let me do that. But I'm happy to. Uh, I'm happy to be the 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 grunt worker to uh, kind of put together some sort of an outline or just a straw man proposal, and then. Uh, yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great, Robert. And, um, yeah. We already kind of thought of start thinking about it, and then I will reach out to my NIST contacts and see whether uh, they can come here. And they have done a number of presentations. Um, and then uh, other peripheral groups, uh, industry and, and federal groups have done various OSCAL webinars. So I can, I probably can collect a, a bunch of links and drop it into the Google Doc sometime. Uh, it's not today, later this week. So if, if folks are interested in kind of the overview of what OSCAL is, um, yeah, that'll give some background material. Yeah, that'll be great. Okay, uh, I think that's good. All right. Yeah. The other thing, Robert, we were just discussing and you know, just uh, thinking out loud and in terms of um, potential things we could produce in addition to the policy report and, of course, continuing to you know grow the adoption of that. And maybe one thing that uh, we could do, I was thinking on that, uh, is that um, it may be once we have a few examples of these reports, we can even create like a CNCF blog post or something to uh, advertise that this report's available and you know see you know, just promote uh, interest in it. The other you know other potential deliverable or something we could you know uh, output from the group it would could be you know starting to you know. Uh, have some classification of the different policy tools uh, that are in scope, right, that we're talking about. And I think uh, Starboard has a good, you know, um, sort of a grouping of these already. And we had discussed some of that with Liz and Daniel and Itai also from Aquasec was just discussing that. So perhaps that could be also a document or a Google Doc we produce and publish somewhere to say. And of course, that can will change and evolve over time as things change. But at least right now we know that there's image scanners, there's admission controllers, there's configuration scanners, and um, but the end runtime security type of tools that we're um, and there's examples of each of these categories, right? Yeah, that I, I makes sense. I know you now Howard and Erica are always putting together slides for for various KubeCon presentations. So, um, and they're, 
they're more dialed into that process, but I would imagine that whatever we can produce as a white paper or, or guidance here, kind of bump it up to the, we could present it to the higher SIG group on the, on the later uh, 10 a.m. calls, 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, and then if that, you know, based on that reception, I would imagine that Erica would, would be happy to put a KubeCon presentation around that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll bring that up with her and let's, let's see what we can do. There's a, a white paper that uh, Six Security is uh, authoring at the moment. I don't know if you've considered to... Well, actually, yeah, that I, and when I, unfortunately, I put on the, the calendar item today, <laughs> the discussion about OSCAL, um, but then took it off because I had this unexpected conflict. But um, now that I'm on, there, there was a lot of back and forth chatter in that white paper review about compliance. Um, it wasn't necessarily in the context of policy, um, but I think, I think certainly everyone here on this call kind of sees that there's a nexus between compliance and policy. Um, so I had said that, yeah, we would, we would kind of champion that as uh, a discussion point for this group. Um, I, I think, I, I still think now that we've had a little intro, um, I think it's probably beneficial to, to put that on the next meeting. I'll, like I say, write up a little bit of a summary of Pascal how that integrates with the CR and incorporate some of that chatter from the, the white paper review. Uh, but yeah, you're right, Ita. I, I think the, the, the gist of the back and forth on the compliance section of that white paper um, was that it was kind of, you know, open-ended. <laughs> it would be nice if, if there was more substance to that, that component. At least that was the takeaway that I had. I don't know if you had a different perspective of Ite. No, no, it's fine. Just wanted to bring the topic for discussion. I don't have any opinions about it yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I guess my uh, trying to gather data versus project a particular uh, solution, um, I guess the only bias I would have is that you know, if the goal of the cloud native security white paper is to define compliance within a cloud native infrastructure and, and conceptual framework, I would think that that greatly overlaps with the notion of, uh, you know, policy definition, policy output definition, and all within kind of the shift left, you know, infrastructure as code, policy as code, policy compliance as code metaphor. So that, that's kind of where my brain is, is anchored. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so maybe, uh, Robert, is that something you want to do? You said you could write up a summary, but then should we put that on the agenda for our next, uh, our next meeting, or what do you propose? Yeah, that's, that's what I'll, I'm suggesting, is that um, okay. I'll just expand on the agenda placeholder that I had for... Uh, two weeks from today, I'll add details around Oscal and um, okay. Jaya, are there are there resources that that you would like me to explicitly review as part of how that connects to um, any of the projects you're involved? I'm happy to take a look at those. Yeah, I'm actually talking to some folks in the IBM research team um, later today about this very topic. Um, so let me see, you know, whether they have published anything externally. And I'm also planning to bring them in into this uh, work group as well, right? Because they are also looking at this, this topic. Um, so let me, uh, let me try and do that. So that's one. And then, like I said, I have some contacts in NIST um, that I've been collaborating with also from a Red Hat point of view. So I will uh, ping them as well. And so we can bring them into the same forum, right? So we can talk about that here. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and, and I'll try to get you an, uh, an advanced draft of, again, it's not gonna be anything extravagant, just a, a simple outline, one pager. Um, 
but if, if you want to circulate that around to this group in advance of that call, then maybe we'll get some, some good feedback on the next, on the next session. That sounds awesome. Yep. So you can just put a link into this, uh, into the, into this work groups, um, agenda meeting notes stock, right? Correct. Correct. I'll expand okay. the placeholder that I have there. Okay. Uh, Sounds good, Robert. Thank you. All right. I don't think we had anything else on the agenda for today. So unless anyone else has something to discuss, we can, um, I guess, wrap up early today. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.